From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Betty Lewis. Hey, it works. <laughs> sure it does. So hang up that extension. Come on back here in the living room. We'll finish up our cocktails and be on our way. Yes, sir. How about that, Johnny? Where'd you learn that trick of making your own phone ring? And the extension, too. From the man who put the extension to my apartment. Yeah, it's kind of a line check. You dial that number and hang up. Then if both phones ring, you know the extension is okay. Oh, what do you know? Yeah, there's another line check number that you can dial. I forgot what it is, and all you get is a busy signal. <laughs> it could be an awfully cute gag sometime, you know, on somebody who didn't know about these numbers. Yeah. Oh, let's finish our cocktails and go... Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you didn't make it ring this time. I, uh, I kind of left your number with my call service. Oh, no, so Johnny. So maybe I'd better take it. Huh? Now, listen. If that's some insurance company, well, you can just tell them they'll have to wait until tomorrow. Sure, sure, sure. This is the third time in a week that we've tried to have dinner together. First, it was that Curly Waters who tried to kill you. Oh, no, no, no. Take it easy. Maybe this calls for you, one of your faithful boyfriends. Oh, oh well, then maybe I'd better answer it. Well, just leave it to me. I'll scare him off. Johnny Dollar. Burton Wells at Masters Insurance and Trust. Oh? I've got to see you, Johnny, here at the office, right away. Well, look, I have a date, Bert, so can't whatever's bothering you wait until some other time? Listen. Huh? You have a date, huh? Yeah, that's right. We're just about to go out for dinner. No. Johnny, unless you get over here right away, you may find you have another date. What? A date with death. Well? Okay, Bert. <laughs> Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Masters Insurance and Trust Company Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the date with death matter. I told my date, Betty Lewis, to stay there in her apartment until I called her. Then I spent item one, $1.20, for a cab to Masters Insurance and Trust. Bert Wells was all alone in his office. Come in, Johnny. Sit down. Yeah, sure, Bert. Now, what's all the excitement? Curly Waters. Oh, I kind of had a hunch that was it. Lieutenant Howard Daly's on his way over from police headquarters. What's happened? Two years ago, you had Curly sent up to the pen. Yeah, that's right, for the Maley's department store job he pulled. Then, just a few days ago... He swore that he'd get you for that, that he'd kill you, didn't he? So what happened? When he escaped and came here to Hartford a few days ago... I know all about that from reading your report. Thanks to some quick thinking on your part, the police nabbed him instead. Plus the loot from the department store robbery. You know who deserves a real credit for that? The girl I had a date with tonight. Until you spoil things with your phone call. Johnny, as you know, either you or the police wounded Curly Waters. Which is why he was taken to the hospital and placed under guard instead of being locked up. So? Well, Mr. Wells, I see you managed to locate him. Yes, Lieutenant. Are you okay, Dollar? Any reason why I shouldn't be, Howie? Has uh, Mr. Wells told you what's happened? No, but I think I can guess. Curly Waters escaped from the hospital. Yes, I had three good men there watching over him, but he managed to get by them. How? With help. One of his old cronies. Gimpy Taylor? Yes. Gimpy created a disturbance out in the hall, and when they went after him, Curly crashed out through the window. When they went back in after him, Gimpy took it on the lam. Three good men, did you say? Well, the odds were all with Curly and Gimpy. When the boys went out in the hall after Gimpy again, it was full of interns and, and nurses and stretchers with patients on them. If they'd fired a shot, they might have killed somebody. Well, what goes? Do you want me to go out and look for him? No, sir. Don't you see, Johnny? The reason I called you is because of the threat against your life. Of course. And, Johnny, I'm going to provide you with a bodyguard 24 hours a day oh, until Curly is picked up. No, no, wait a minute. Listen, Howie. You listen. He almost got to you just a few days ago. Don't you forget that. And one way or another. Oh. The lieutenant's right, Johnny. You said yourself that if it wasn't for your girlfriend, this uh, Betty Lewis... Uh-oh. Uh Bert, let me use your... Here. Hmm. 
You said one way or another, Howie. That's right. And yeah, maybe through your girl. Is that who you're calling? Yes. Are you sure she's at home, Johnny? That's where I just left her. And I told her to stay there, not to move until she heard from me. Johnny. Oh, if Curly Waters ever... Come on, Betty. Pick it up. Pick it up. No answer. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, and the date with death matter. Curly Waters, killer, on the loose again. I left Betty in her apartment. I told her to stay there. But when I tried to call her on the phone, no answer. Lieutenant Howard Daly and I took the elevator down to the street to his prowl car. Next turn left, Howie. Take the next left. No. We'll make it the one after that. But it's one way, the wrong way. Yeah, but it'll give us a shortcut. After a couple of blocks. Hang on, Johnny. Hold. Now, it's the third building in the block. Lead the way, Johnny. Where's the elevator? Come on, forget it. The stairs are quicker. Johnny, if Curly has got to her... I'll say it. Haven't you got a key? I have not. Stand back, Johnny. I'll see if I can smash it open. Wait a minute. Betty. Betty. Wait, look, it's open. Betty. Betty, are you... She's gone, Johnny. Just gone. We went over the apartment with a fine tooth comb, hoping to find some clue as to where she'd gone. Yeah, and how she'd gone. Curly was a desperate man, likely to do anything. Betty had left in a hurry, we were sure of that, because the closet in the foyer was left open, the coat hanger lying on the floor, and because of the way she'd left the front door unlocked. But that was all we knew. At least there was no sign of a struggle. Because he probably had a gun. And your girlfriend probably knows he's one of the best shots in the country. All right, all right, Howie, now listen. Huh? No, let me take it, Johnny. But it may be. I'll get it. Hello? Lieutenant Howard Daly there? Um, who's calling? Uh, Riley, down at headquarters, don't you think? Oh, uh, it's Riley. Thanks. Yeah? Uh, we got one of them, Lieutenant. Gimpy Taylor. What's that? Where? About 11 miles up North Road. Yeah. He wrapped a stolen car around a big elm tree, you know, up at Dead Man's Cave. Did it kill him? I managed to crawl a couple of hundred yards into the brush before he conked out. Was Curly Waters with him? Uh, Riley, was Curly Waters with him? Well, there was no sign of him, but the man they stole the car from said there was two of them. There was two of them then. Ask him. Any sign of Betty there? Uh, Riley, any sign of a passenger, a girl? Uh, no, sir, Lieutenant. Uh, well, okay, I'll keep checking with you. You hear it all, Johnny? Yeah. Two men stole the car. So the other one must have been Curly. Yeah, but whether they were both on the rack and Curly was able to get away. After all, if Gimpy was able to crawl a couple of hundred yards... Yeah. Curly may be a couple of hundred miles away by now. Or maybe not. Howie, I don't think he left town with Gimpy. Helped him steal the car, yeah, to make it look as though he was leaving. Why do you say that, Johnny? Because of Betty. Because I think he's holding Betty to get me to him then maybe you'll agree to a 24-hour-a-day bodyguard after all, huh? No, no, absolutely not. Johnny, I... You think that Curly's a jerk? I well, know. he isn't. He's smart. He's smart enough to smell a cop a mile away. Just no, the same... No, Howie, I... no. There's only one thing to do, only one way to flush him out. We... Johnny. Betty. Betty, what happened? Where have you been? What happened to you? Well, I got a phone call. Yeah? From the hospital. At least they said it was the hospital. Yeah? They said you were down there. That you'd been shot by Curly Waters. See, I told you he's clever, Howie. Oh, Betty, thank heaven he isn't out to get you. Oh, this is Lieutenant Daly from headquarters. Hi, Lieutenant. Hello. Uh, what were you going to say, Johnny? I say he's clever. This means that Curly's still in town, still gunning for me. 
He called Betty to get her away from this apartment, knowing that I'd come here. Johnny. Yeah. And he might have been here waiting for me if you hadn't come too. But he's smart. Smart enough to want to catch me alone. So, Howie, it means there's only one bait in the world that'll bring him out in the open. What's that, Johnny? Me. Alone. Johnny. All right. Betty, you're staying here. Howie, you're going back to headquarters. Me? I'm going to my apartment. I'm going to sit there and wait for him. Oh, Johnny, no. Okay. Sure, Johnny, you go right ahead. But I'll have enough men hidden away surrounding that place of yours. No, then you'll never get him. Then he'll have to skip out. Maybe skip the country. I'd like to see him try it. Howie, he's an actor, a good one. If that costume of a priest he was going to use before, he can... Well, in that, he could have walked right by you or me or anybody else and never have been recognized. And with a phony passport, which he already has, he'll skip the country, all right. But when he comes back, I won't know. I won't be ready for him. Right now, I am. Oh, but please, Johnny. Yeah, don't listen. Keep... No, Howie. But you'd be a sitting duck for it. Sorry. Him. It's the only way. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, pigeon, maybe soon to be a dead one. But the only way to bring Curly Waters out in the open was for me to wait for him. Wait for him to come and try to kill me. So after making Betty promise to stay in her apartment and Lieutenant Daly to go back to headquarters, I went over to my own apartment. And I waited. Believe me, I felt anything but brave. But I'd rather take my chances on having it out with him now than spend the rest of my life knowing he was still alive, somewhere, still gunning for me. That sooner or later he'd catch me off guard. 11 p.m. 12. 12.30. Huh? My impulse was to raise my gun and pull off a couple of shots right through that door. Yeah? Who is it? It's Howie. Open up. Oh. Oh, Howie, what the devil are you doing here? Uh, just, uh... Checking up, Johnny. Checking up. You got a bunch of your boys scattered around out there? No. Those bodyguards you were talking about? No, Johnny. But listen, will you? Sitting here alone, waiting for him, you're taking too much of a chance. Can't you get it through that thick skull of yours? I tell you, it's the only way to make him show himself. And I tell you, it's the surest way in the world to get murdered. Uh, You don't think I'm able to take care of myself, huh? I didn't say that. Well, then? I'm a cop, Johnny. I just can't let you do this. Oh? You mean you're worried that maybe you'll be set down to pounding a beat again? Oh, no, you crazy fool. I'm worried about you. Won't you change your mind? No, no. Now you better leave, Howie, and for heaven's sake, don't come back again. But unless I do, how can I tell... How will I know? Oh, you'll know. You'll know. If he does come, and I'm sure he will, if you don't scare him off. I hope and pray he doesn't. Well, when it's all over, I'll call you. Johnny, if he kills you... Oh, go on, Howie, will you? You're just holding things up. And don't tell me he doesn't know you've come here. So go on, baby, beat it. Okay. And you give me your word that you won't come back until I call you. But what if he gets you? Your word on it? Okay, Johnny. I went back into my little kitchen and brewed a pot of coffee, a big one. Fatigue was a possibility I hadn't thought of until right now. Maybe Curly Waters had... Yeah, he probably thought of a lot of things, a lot of tricks. Because at least one thing was sure, after what happened a few days ago, he knew that somehow he'd have to get me off guard. I hoped and prayed that Howie would keep his word, would keep his men away from the whole area. That he himself would stay away, not even call until this whole thing had come to a head. Then I heard it. It was at the back door of my apartment, the kitchen door that led to a fire escape. Fortunately, I'd turned the light off in the kitchen. I could sneak in without being seen. Johnny. Oh. Johnny. Betty, get in here quick. Oh, why did you come here? Oh, Johnny, I've been crazy with worry. Didn't the lieutenant have brains enough to put some men around your place to keep an eye on oh, you? Oh, I threw an old tin can out the window, and when they went to investigate, I sneaked out the back way through the alley. Betty, you're insane to have come here. Don't you see if Curly comes and there's a lot of shooting? You think I could just sit there knowing what might happen here any minute? Knowing that if Curly got lucky or, oh, or honey, something... Oh, honey, honey, I, I don't know what to tell you. And I can't send you back without a police guide. And if the police come around, it'll only keep Curly away. I've just been sitting here hoping that Howie will have sense enough not to come back again. Again? Oh, yeah, he got worried about me, too. And... Wait a minute. Johnny. Johnny, it's Curly. 
coat, Johnny. Yeah, maybe it is. All right. Go on into the bedroom here. Come on, Betty. Johnny. Now, stay there. No matter what happens, stay there. You understand? Stay there. Please, dear. Yeah, who is it? It's Howie. Open up. Oh. I told you, Howie, you idiot. You would... Just don't try to raise that gun, Dollar. Curly, drop it. Drop it, Dollar. Now, over there, sit in that chair. Yeah, I guessed right. He sent the cops away so I'd come after you. But I had to be sure. That's why I've been sitting in an empty apartment across the hall all afternoon, all night, to make sure. That's how I knew what the lieutenant's voice sounded like. Real clever boy, Curly. All right. I'm not going to waste any time. That dumb lieutenant might try coming back again. I'd have to kill him, too. So, Dollar, I'm not even giving you time to pray. You're, you're pretty sure there aren't any cops planted around here, aren't you? I'm not only sure, but Gimpy Taylor's wife is spotted where she can see him if they try to come around. Yeah? Just what do you think she could do about it? One shot into the alley across the street and they'd forget all about you, dumb cops. All right, tell me, Curly. Forget it. Goodbye, Dollar. No, don't answer. Not a word, Dollar. Not a word. Curly. Just hang it up slowly. Curly, listen. What? Who is that? Where should I? Curly. Curly, listen to me. Hand me that phone. And don't move. Move with a gun on me here. Curly. Yeah? Who is it? Myrtle. Gimpy's wife. Myrtle? Now listen. Dollar isn't alone. He what? In the bedroom. Waiting for you. Listen. Is the door to that bedroom open? Uh, no, it, it isn't. What goes, Curly? Quiet. Now listen to me. If the door of that bedroom starts to open, don't wait. Start shooting. Hey, Dalla, hold this phone. Keep the line open. And don't move out of that chair. Mind telling me why? Quiet. Quiet. No, no, you don't! But I do! Ooh. Okay, Betty. And thank heaven you remember the number to dial and make those phones ring. And how about the way I, I disguised my voice for him? Do you realize what a chance you were taking oh. if he hadn't turned to fire when you kicked open that door? If I'd missed him when I threw that phone at him? It worked. That's all that counts. And look, look, one of his bullets nicked you right here on the arm. Nicked me? Uh, oh, oh, blood. Oh, hold me, Johnny. Oh, I... sure. Sure. Yeah, Curly's back in the clink. And this time to stay. When the necessary papers were signed, I hauled him over to the state pen myself. So, expense account total, including transportation, $47 even. Betty? Betty Lewis? Well, I'll tell you this. If I were the marrying kind, believe me. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Lucille Meredith, James McCallion, Russ Thorson, Sam Edwards, and Herb Vigran. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Dan Coverly speaking.